The background to this research project is UWC's strategic plan on teaching and learning. And one of the goals was to ascertain students' learning needs and develop or reconfigure teaching and learning programs in response to their needs. Um, this goal was prioritized, prioritized by the CHS faculty in their own um, teaching and learning plan um, with regard to the CHS students. Um, now I started as a teaching and learning specialist in the faculty and was given this as like a major task that I needed to do and I was quite overwhelmed like thinking what are students learning needs and how does one research them um, and, um, and, and also the concept of ascertaining, how do you ascertain students learning needs. Um, and unfortunately, um, I was joined by Nikki and then later Simone on the project, and we've continued teasing out these issues. Um, the main aim that we formulated was to examine the perceptions of learning needs of undergraduate students. So we realized that, you know, to move away from this ascertain learning needs as if it's a kind of objective. Thing that exists, to look at students' perceptions in the CHS faculty and the capacity of the faculty to meet these needs because we thought they couldn't be looked at in isolation but students are in a particular context and um, in that context they have responses to that context, um, they have particular needs of that context. Um, and then, um, yeah. I'll just talk about the research design. We chose a population of third year students in the faculty and our reason for choosing third year students was that they would have had enough time in the faculty to reflect on their learning and have thought more about their learning needs. Um, questionnaires were administered to one class from each of the disciplines or programs. Focus group discussions were held with four groups of students from, from the different programs. Um, there were interviews with nine lecturers from different departments, so we're also getting lecturers' um, perceptions of students' learning needs so that we could triangulate that with the students' perceptions. Um, and the intention was that, that through interpretation of the various sources of data, we would be able to gain insight into students' learning needs in order to make recommendations to meet these needs more effectively. Um, this presentation, this paper that we're working on, is based solely on the initial analysis of the student focus group discussions. And um, while, while reading through the um, student focus group transcripts, there were three themes that were really coming out strongly. And these, these are the themes that we're focusing on in this paper. And the one was to do with relating theory and practice. Um, the other one was collaborative learning and student agency. Um, we, we had a discussion about whether to reveal the, the very low numbers of students in our focus groups. Um, we, towards the end of last year, we, um, we managed to get together focus group, three focus groups. The one of social work students was, was a pretty good number for focus group. Um, the, the other two were, were two and two students, the one being a mixed group. And the reason, I think a big part of the reason for that was the time of year, because it was about October and getting close to exams and so on. And then we decided to, um, to, to get together at least one other focus group this year, which we did. We got four nursing students of the same cohort of students, so they were starting in fourth year this year. Um, now, I'm not going to go through this, um, this interview <coughs> schedule, I don't know if you can read it with the colouring, but basically the, this is the interview schedule that we used um, for the focus groups, but it, you know, it was a guiding schedule, it was kind of semi-structured and quite loosely used. And we looked at um, student preparation, <laughs> their development um, during the programme, um, the teaching methodologies that worked for them, student agency, identity in terms of the department, the discipline, 
um, and the, the professional field <coughs> and, and so on, to what extent their needs are being met. Um, and I'm going to start talking about this, this theme of theory and practice, which is, which is a very important theme for health practitioners and social workers. And you know, m most of our students actually who volunteered were social workers and nursing students. Because clearly the practical experience that they do um, and the, the clinical work that they do is very, a very large part of their curriculum, an important part of preparing them to be those kind of professionals. Lecturers complain that students struggle to apply theory to practice, and I think this is a pretty universal thing. It's in the literature, the lecturers we interviewed were saying that, and I think it's something that one hears a lot. Now, in the focus groups, particularly the social work students felt quite confident that they had been learning to apply theory to practice. Um, so it's interesting to see that discrep discrepancy but you know, I think that also one of the things one has to take into account about focus groups is that the participants are self-selecting mm -hmm. and the kind of participants that volunteer to be involved in focus groups tend to be those ones with initiative who, you know, who are interested in, in learning more things and making the effort and so on. So, you know, it tends to be maybe those better students or those more proactive students. Naomi, a nursing student, said, now I've grown to the point that when I study, I make connections. The aspect of memorizing is still there, but instead of just cramming things in, I'm able to really make connections of what I'm studying and real life, and I'm able to apply it in the real life situation, first starting with me and my family, and then in the group, or even at work. Um, I found it inter interesting that it came up with both social work students and with this nursing student, the, the way that their learning has helped them to reflect on themselves um, and, and also looking at their personal lives, that, that there has to be this kind of reflection on their personal life. It's not just a matter of taking theory and applying it to a practical situation, that there's a kind of holistic development that takes place. Um, and this, this is a quotation which illustrates that, thing, that sense of taking the theory and implementing it in practice and mentioning this particular theory that she has been implementing. This is one of the social work students. Um, then the, the capacity to reflect on one's own life through an altered lens. Um, Sarah was a mature social work student who'd been a minister and she talked about how she'd become more critical in reflecting on her own work and organisational experience through her studies in social work. So she was quite critical about her experience in the church and she says, I see through the theory that we've learned at social work how much damage some churches are doing because the things that we used to do when we have social issues, we would handle it differently, thinking it's the right way. But we are doing so much damage in the community and now with the knowledge that I've got now, I regret certain things that I've done in the past and I definitely would have done it differently if I had the knowledge that I've got now, especially when it comes to ethical considerations that we did not apply in the church. Um, again, Sarah said, um, now all the theory that I've got has become concrete in my daily work, in my daily thinking. Whenever I go to an agency, a, a, where they're located to do practical work. I look critically and I think this needs to be done here. Um, and I'd, I like this quote. I also thought that there was something kind of poetic religious about it where she talks about concrete in my daily work. Um, but yeah, also the, also the agency that she's showing about how this capacitates her to know what needs to be done. She also described how the concept of confidentiality had become ingrained in her through her studies. And she said the lecturers hammered ethical considerations and what is ethical dilemma and confidentiality. And she said it's just so easy to just share things. But yes, when somebody said, now when somebody says something about someone, the bells go off about confidentiality and informed consent. And I think in both of these quotations, um, there's, 
there's something about internalization of the of the values and the the thinking that she's been that she's been learning about. Um, um, I just I didn't mention that we, we we aren't using a lot of theory at the moment in this presentation, but I think that there is a lot of theory that can be woven into into this. So, you know, it, the, the concept of internalization is something that we would like to explore more here. <coughs> Some of the students experience learning to integrate theory and practice as a struggle. I mean, I'm sure they all did, but they didn't all <laughs> speak about it in this way. And Vanessa said, sometimes it's very hard to put A and B together. You have it in your mind. You want to really connect and to link the two parts with each other. It was at times very challenging. But with the assistance and help of the supervisor at the department and fellow colleagues, it was really easy. I think the, the social, social work department would enjoy hearing some of these things. But, but, but um, you know, there's a sense of mediation that's, um, that, that's being provided by the supervisor and by, the, um, by her colleagues and by the other students and the kind of structures that have been set up or the culture that's being set up that there is that support. Um, for the integration of theory and practice. That's, that's kind of what I've read into it. And then with social workers, is the contrast between university and the reality out there. Um, the, I think this is a very common thing that social workers get depressed doing things that they, that in the right way, but they're being taught that it's right, but because of the load of social problems and issues that are out there, they can't actually do that. They can't actually use that kind of textbook approach or whatever it is. And she, she gave an example where they're trained to use a process note to, to <coughs> write down what, it ta what takes place in a session. But in the organization where she was placed, she said they're so piled up with work that they can't actually even use that. Um, then looking at um, issues of support for students when they go into a clinical environment. Um, some students use the word sink or swim about how they entered into a clinical environment. And one of the students said we were thrown in the deep end, which could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. I'm interested that she didn't just say it was a bad thing. She realized that there was something necessary about being thrown into that environment, possibly. Um, we were just allocated to a hospital, and then we had to go there, and we had to use a theory that you learned in first and second year. So now you're in third year. Now you have to put all of that into practice. And so the first few weeks, we were all like dumbfounded. How are we going to apply our theory to practice now? And I'm not sure what, you know, what the continuation of that story was. Um, and then the, another, th these were physiotherapists, um, they spoke about how their clinicians before were postgraduate students and they were doing less dem demanding work in the hospitals, not treating the patients. But this year our clinicians are physios um, who aren't exposed to the university and so on. So, I asked the clinician, how do you put the oxygen marks on a patient? Because I'm afraid I'm going to do it the wrong way. And then she laughed at me and looked at me like, how do you not know that? Um, and she said, so, so I would know how to do it, but sometimes you just, just need that extra show how first things. And then I know I'm doing it right, not wondering, am I doing it right? Should I do it this way or so on? For something as simple as putting the oxygen mask mask on a patient. So, you know, the, um, there, there's also another quotation from a social work student who said, um, you know, you have to go and implement a certain methodology, say about self-esteem, but you've never been taught how to do the activity. You've been taught theory. Um, but at, at, at some point, students are going to have to be be put in situations that they don't know how to deal with it because they haven't done it before. But there needs to be careful mediation of that and to what extent are we getting that right. Okay, then um, I, 
I'm just trying to sort of think how to juggle this in terms of time. But basically, the, the School of Nursing has adopted a case-based approach to all of their undergraduate teaching. And um, the case studies are designed to help learners analyze data and identify problems and determine options for solving problems. That's the kind of theory about, um, about a case-based approach. And so, you know, typically in, in all aspects of the um, in all aspects of their kind of theory classes, they are given cases with trigger questions and they divide so these are just questions they need to address and they they're divided into groups and allocate the questions between them. Um, and then the idea is that they research the questions and then the group does a joint presentation in class. Um, and you, you have mixed views about, um, about group work. Obviously, group work is a very controversial thing. I'm sure all of you have experienced that in your teaching. Um, so some of them talk about the, the benefits of group work in that you might have missed something, so you'll pick it up from your, um, from your colleague, or you might have made a mistake, and, then, and your colleague will, like, will correct you. Um, they, they, all, they all saw it as a challenge and um, the group dynamics were difficult and so on. Um, and then the, the, the one student said, in terms of his, he, he can go and ask his um, friends or classmates whenever he has a question, um, rather than having to go to the lecturer's office and taking time going there and maybe I won't find the lecturer there. Please. Um, we, we, we wanted to look into whether it's, it's some kind of flexible learning in a sense of set, having a network of, um, of people that you're working with and not you know, freeing you up in a sense to that kind of informal contact and learning. Um, okay, and then there's the issue of lazy people and lazy students. Um, which, which is obviously problematic for students. Um, a very negative view. You see. <laughs> okay, I won't read it, but you can just read it quickly. And because Google is such a wide place, I like that. <laughs> and you need someone who's got authority and exper expertise. Um, and then the student get, gave a number of points about um, Students have un, um, unequal access to computers and the internet, they live in widely dispersed areas, they don't have resources, they don't have cars, and then there's conflict caused, um, particularly about how much work the various um, group members contribute, and the students' attitudes. Um, and she, she she was very disappointed because she thought group work was really important for um, because of learning how to work with students from diverse backgrounds. So it's not like when you go to hospital, you always be with your friends that you work well with. Um, so it's like it's a really po it should be a really positive thing, but we the students are making it really hard for each other to actually make that work, and it's quite a big challenge. She said that the lecturers try to encourage students to work together, but there's only so much that they can do. At the end of the day, it's up to students whether we really want to make that work or not. The lecturer can only do so much. Um, I think that, that I've got like a section on agency and then uh, some concluding comments and questions, but I'm happy to, you know, we've covered most of it, so I'm happy to kind of it's the conclusion. Okay. 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 Well, um, I, yeah, I just wanted to say a bit more about students' agency because it's, um, you know, it threads through a lot of this. And the same student, you can stand there the whole day and learn nothing, or you can go out and do something in a 12 hour shift. Um, um, and then, and then some, 
you know, just the idea of going out into the real world and being on your own and how like a combination of being terrified and feeling proud and that you have the knowledge and so on. Um, and, it, and also these comments about like feeling really good having to a student who didn't choose dietetics but having <coughs> been through the dietetics program he feels really good about it and he feels really good about becoming a dietitian and advising people to eat healthy and stay healthy. <laughs> Okay, then, you know, just coming back to the ascertaining students' learning needs, um, it, I, I, I've just been thinking about, and would be, it would be great if we could have a bit of discussion about, um, you know, where do we go from here? We have, we have, we have the questionnaire data, which is, which is very substantial, a lot of data. We have this data, we have the... Um, we have the lecturer's data, and we still not we, we we're not going to get a and like a clear thing of what our students' learning needs. And um, but I think that that the most that this research can do, in a sense, is be is to be used to facilitate a lot of discussion and departments helping it to inform the faculty and departments to see what they can learn from this. Um, oh yeah, I also just thought that there, there um, needs more research about, also from doing focus groups, it's, you don't get to explore one thing, one concept a lot because you're covering, you're covering all these things, so it would be interesting to get more information about, for instance, the case-based methodology and how is it being used. Um, is it being used for conceptual development and developing clinical reasoning, or is it just students sharing information? Is it just being used for students to share information with each other, or to cover the content of the course? Um, yeah, and then the issue of student agency. It was just an idea that I had while I was doing this. Is I mean, we can't do it. We can't change students sense of agency about learning we can do we can do a certain extent to make them more motivated and so on but I was just wondering if this kind of thing could be taken up through a student body or working with students and lecturers to to get students aware and excited themselves more about um, about the need to take more responsibility and um, take on more yeah, take more responsibility for their own learning. Yeah. Thank you very much. We have about five minutes for questions, comments, anyone? Well, sure, I'm probably pick up on what Aronis uh, uh, ended up with, uh, the transition to higher education document, which places, explains exactly that we don't have a supermarket consumerism approach to education when we come to higher education university and that we really need to be working through this across all departments that that is the approach that everyone expects that it's 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 taken for granted that they encounter this uniformly wherever they go for lectures that it depends on them. Yeah. 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 My, my comment question was first group work and I was going to say that somebody said to me I've tried working with groups and it's been horrible. And I was going to say that somebody said to me that they work with groups, and that this is just the second book to the job. <laughs> and the groups, his groups are successful because he works with them from the first year. It's the same group from first year, second year, third year, fourth year. So I'm just wondering what social work, I mean, the sort of nursing groups, whether they are. Because so I was interested in that. I thought, well, my groups don't work because it's only one year, you know, they're there and they're, they're not invested in each other. Yeah. In the same way. Maybe, maybe I'm not straight back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. 